Easy guys, it's Monk here. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about, about like creative block and what we can do to tackle it. Uh, I'm not really showing you a lot like actually in Logic today, but we're just still in this format because it's easier uh, than doing like a full vlog style video, I suppose. I'm going to go through like 10 different methods or 10 different things that I try to do when I'm going through creative block. It's It's really, it's really shit. Like when you get creative block, it can really get you down or it, get, it really gets me down anyway like because I'm so focused on my music and it is what I want to do every day when I hit a period of block like it it isn't great and I do get down so the first tip number one is take a break because I know it's not like what you want to hear when you're at that point necessarily because you just want to progress and that's the whole reason you're frustrated is because you can't but Trust me, sometimes what you need is to just go do something else and just forget about it and try and just do some leisure activities and just enjoy yourself outside of music. And just having that break will give your brain a chance to reset and refresh. And when you come back, it, it should be easier. Sometimes it takes a day or two. Sometimes it takes a week or two. Like... That's just the way it is, unfortunately, and sometimes you do just need to remove yourself from the situation in order to regain clarity of it. Um, so so take a break is number one. It does work. It's just a matter of time. Uh, but now that, now that we've said that, now that one's out of the way, I'm going to give you some more practical things you can try uh, if you're just not having luck with your own tunes. So... Number two is to fo which is sort of relates to number one because it's doing something different, and that's to focus on learning rather than creating. So rather than trying to like finish a track, uh, try to like learn a new skill and like things that maybe you've been neglecting. Because I know I do this a lot. It's like I have this set way that I make tunes, and I know I can make them that way. So I know I can make them quickly that way, and I can get more out, and that means I can send more to labels, and I can have more success and proceed, like progress at a quicker rate. However, when I'm doing this, I'm not really progressing with my overall ability in producing because I'm just sort of going round and round the same formula that I know works for me, which is great for progressing myself as an artist because I'm able to get a lot of content out there. But in terms of actually progressing my skills to become a better producer, not so great. So watch tutorials and things and maybe you're like me where you've done a lot of sample based music. So you're used to chopping up samples and pre-recorded audio. So like for my example, like over the last year, I've really been trying to learn sound design a lot more and get better with synths and implementing them into my compositions more than I normally would. So. If you're having creative block and you're struggling to get an idea down and get a song out, just stop trying to do that and just start focusing on like, um, start fo focusing on like teaching yourself to, to do something that you can't do already. So the aim isn't to like finish a track, but the aim is to just sort of just practice at something. Like, and I think that takes the pressure off you to make sure the music is good. Um, because you're more just like it isn't about the music being good it's just about you progressing at a skill so sound design is one and that kind of leads me into another one which I'll set as number three so sound design have like have a sound design session and this could be with synthesis or this could be with samples um, where what I mean by that is by rather than trying to make and finish a track, you're just making sounds. You're just focusing on creating things that you could use later on to make in a tune. So whether that whether that's like um, getting up, oh, I need to make a software. Yeah, whether that's getting up like a serum or something, and like what you could do is just focus on making making your own presets so here we're on like initialized preset and we could watch tutorials on serum for example and we could watch how other people make patches and we could try making some of our own and then up here you can save save new patches and then you could come back to them later on when you want when you're ready to make tunes again and you've got loads of sounds ready to go same time if you found a good sample um you could then do this thing that i do sometimes where i just see how many ways i can flip a sample like not trying to 
fit it into a composition or into music necessarily but just having that piece of audio and then seeing how many different ways I can manipulate it uh, if you stack them up as well to try and get how many ways you can get them uh, fitting together so like uh, using that sample to make like some low end content some mid range some high end you see what I mean uh, musically getting it all to fit together so you've almost got like stems ready to go like to to sample yourself when it comes to making your next composition samples as well I will talk about samples from here number four I'll, I'll say is collecting samples like collecting sounds um, so you know scouting through films and and old music and obviously you've got to be careful about copyright here like it is up to you your own choice whether you choose to sample copyrighted stuff it's not recommended by a lot of industry professionals but a lot of us do it anyway because it's fun um but you are taking a risk if you release music with with copyrighted uh music so you have to understand the risk when you're doing it and understand that like if you get fined it is your own fault the other thing with collecting sounds as well like not just samples that exist already but if you've got like a microphone that you can record sounds with like build yourself sample packs start collecting different sounds like I have um, I'll just show you this so I have this zoom h4n uh, handy recorder it says which is used for field recordings and stuff it's got like six stereo these things are for the stereo image of it and stuff um, so I could go out of that I could go out with that and just try collecting sounds and um, I could do that in my studio just with sounds around the house like little percussion hits I've got lots of little instruments and like random things that make sounds that I could just record one shots from and you know pitch them to see or in the software and start collecting like banks of of one shots and samples that I can then use to make my own software instruments with as well Number five, so I'll start by explaining what I used to do. So I always used to, my method for making tunes was I'd set myself like a loop up like this. So there I've got myself like a four bar loop and I would just build within that four bar loop and I would build up so many tracks of different things uh, that all obviously trying to fit together but I would like overcrowd the loop. I would get it so it's so busy and there's so much going on so then I had lots to work with so it's like I built this loop up so there's like 20 tracks of all stuff going on and it's sounding crowded you might need to mute some uh, to make room for others it doesn't matter if it's all too too much basically as long as you know that all of these loops you've created are all going to work within the composition and then when it comes to so, so you sort of spend the first couple of hours of producing time just doing that and then you've just got loads of stuff to instantly work with when it when it comes to arranging that's it so when it comes to arranging and composing the full thing you've just got loads to work with that I can then uh, place out over the track so if you don't do that already then that then that's a tip to try or the other thing which is the thing that I started doing because of creative block was instead of doing that I, I would just build my drums and then I'll, I would do the layout of the drums over the whole track so I wouldn't even worry about the musical content I would just build build up how the drums were going to go from the start to the end and then immediately on the screen rather than just seeing a loop I could see a full track I could see the length of the full track you've got all the drums there we just need to fill in all the spaces we can see where fills go we can see where we wa might want to change things up just instantly that got me thinking about the thing as a whole track rather than feeling stuck in the loop and a lot of people uh, get that thing of you know you're just stuck in a four or eight bar loop or whatever and it's hard to progress from that so if that's something that you struggle with try this like layout thing first where you, you do all the drums and see how many times you can vary the drums over time get them really interesting go full detail just don't worry about anything else just spend time on drums then maybe start layering in the bass and just seeing how many times uh, also relevant to that is like rather than layering up loads of sounds by doing one sound at a time you can then s see how many times you can vary that one sign or that one sound over the course of the track like how many times is your bass line going to switch up and uh, things like that and I found when I talk to people about this that some people do that already so if you're a person that does that already then try the other way that I was saying about just building up a loop till you've got loads to work with that you can then just spread out across the track 
um, when you're ready to start arranging it. So that's number five. Number six would be to just make something completely different that you're not used to. Make like, for example, I make dub and dubstep and 140, like that kind of spectrum of things. So if I'm having creative block, you know, maybe it's time for me to try making some hip hop. Maybe it's time to make some like jungle drum and bass. Um, one of my creative, when I had really bad creative block in, uh, last year, I ended up just making like ambient for ages because I found like ambient to just be a very freeing process there was so little rules involved in making ambient because it doesn't really need to make sense structurally you're just more creating atmosphere and a vibe i actually did a separate video about how i make ambient music so i'll leave that linked below if you want to go check that out um number seven so a lot of time when you're making music especially if you're like me i have a bit of an addiction to plugins and hardware and software like i just get very excited by these things and spend way too much money on it which is great they're very fun but you end up with with so many things so many options that then can sometimes hinder your creativity because there's just too much to think about. There's too many options at any given moment that sometimes that becomes overwhelming in your brain and becomes difficult to just progress. So sometimes what what my uh, tip number seven is, is to set yourself restrictions and boundaries. Like for example, we've got Serum open here. Okay, what I could do is say that I'm gonna make an entire track using nothing but Serum. So now I've got to work out in Serum how I'm gonna make every single sound. Uh, maybe when i'm doing that i would exclude drums and stuff i'd still use drum samples but if you want to go one step further you could try making all your drums in serum it is possible um so stuff st stuff like that and then maybe you could say okay for this track i'm only going to use stock effects and i'm going to limit myself from using any third party plugins uh to get more of a grip on you on the software that you already have as well which i find is good like there is logic for example has so much going for it there's so much stuff in it already before you even delve into the world of party party plugins but it's quite easy to overlook that because you get excited by you know shiny new things and you never truly learn how to use the stuff you've already got so that can be good for that you know going back to basics uh there's loads of ways you could do that uh loads of creative ways uh if you have any like cool suggestions for this list by the way please leave them in a the comment below because that'd be good um okay so tip tip number eight is going to be to have a pre-formed concept or idea that you're going to be making music specifically for. Uh, what I mean by this is like deciding beforehand like what vibe you want to make. Um, you could do this by like having a reference track. You know, you hear it, you probably do it already. I think a lot of people do. Is like if you have a track that inspires you, and then you come in trying to make a track that's sort of on that vibe that's inspired by that. Um, I also mean like obviously that's on sort of just like a track by track basis but also like creating like a bigger project for yourself can really get the creative like juice flowing I'd say like uh, my big example for this is my full length album that I've made uh, when I decided I was going to make a full length album and I sort of formed the concept for it I, I was just churning out the tunes because I, I was just really excited about the idea and it immediately meant like I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted to do. So, my, so what I did for it is like my album is sort of a cinematic soundscape thing that follows uh, the journey of this um, monk that travels uh, across Asia and Africa. And I, what I wanted to do was like through his journey, like I'm sampling traditional instruments from each region he's passing through as he goes along the Silk Road and then down into Africa and stuff. So I instantly knew what kind of sounds I wanted and what sounds I was reaching for. Um, if you want to check out that album and that project, by the way, I'll, li I'll leave it linked below. Um, but yeah, so it's like maybe creating, coming up with an idea, like I'm going to make an EP, like maybe a full length album is quite daunting, but like maybe an EP, like four or five tracks that are all sound like they come from a specific region or maybe you want to do like four or five tracks that all sound... Um, specifically influenced by another artist i know that people get a bit funny about that sometimes because you feel like you're copying someone else's sound but honestly i find when i do this like so many times i hear a track i'm like ah, oh, sick i want to make something like that 
I use that as the initial influence, but once I'm making the track, it never sounds anything like it. You wouldn't know that that was my influence most of the time. And, you know, even even if you do make something that ends up sounding too close, it's like, well, at least now you're sort of the ball's rolling, you've got an idea down. It's probably easier to sort of cut that idea down and change bits uh, to make it sound less like this other person than it is to create like a new idea from scratch in the first place. So that that's the next tip. And then tip uh, tip number nine that kind of relates to all of these tips is to work quickly. Like don't think too much. Don't overthink what you're doing. Just get ideas down, record them, just do it. Like if I, I, I'm quite guilty of this myself. Like I have a tendency to like overthink whether I like something or not. I put a melody down. I'm like, do I like that? I don't know. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes ignore it and just be like, all right, I've got that. How? What can I add to that to to make it better? Rather than how can I change that melody? Like, what could I now add to make it more to my taste? And you know, at the end, you might go back and you might change it entirely. You might take bits out. But the point is to get the idea down in the first place. You need to get into that flow. You need to just be doing things. Um, a good way to do this, actually, if, if you struggle with it, is when you've got like a part recorded in. Um, you can then bounce bounce that part to audio and like people don't like doing this but honestly if if you're one of them people that struggles with just keeping the flow going delete your midi and just keep the audio bounce of stuff now you're you've committed to that idea because you've cemented it in the project there's no way you can start messing around with the melody anymore you've got that idea now as a sample and you can obviously manipulate that sample and do what you like to it. You can then chop it up and, and reform it. But it's going to help you to commit to the ideas you're having. And you just got to keep progressing. Like, don't get too hung up. Under the same token, it's like, don't worry about your mix down too much while you're still writing and getting the idea down. Because it's all distractions that stop you from just being in the creative flow. You just need to be layering and adding to your sound. Um, and then when you've got like loads of material to work with or you've got like a whole layout, a composition there, then start worrying about the technicalities. Then go in, add little fills, add little layers, uh, process all your effects, compression, EQs, you know, that kind of stuff. I I personally do it like as I'm going along, but to, I limit myself in the amount. Like I always have like an EQ on every channel as I'm going just to make sure that I'm keeping stuff in its space. Um but I just don't, I just try to limit myself from going too crazy uh, until I've got like until I'm happy that the whole idea is there enough that I know I'm going to finish it. I know it's not going to be an issue to get the track finished. Tip number ten is then also to collaborate. So if you're someone that's very solitary, like I am, like I make music, I enjoy making music by myself. I find it easier to be in the creative flow by myself. Sometimes breaking out of that if you're not having much luck try and get a friend round or go to a friend's studio if, if you know other producers that you can work with because that's going to help you you're going to pick up new things and you're going to learn things when you collaborate with people in person like that if you really don't want to do that or if you don't live near someone you can bounce the stems out of pro this is what i do all the time with projects where i feel like i've got a good idea but I just don't know where to go with it and i'm stuck on it but i don't want to waste the idea i just bounce the stems out and i like I put a little clip up on a private SoundCloud link of what I've got so far and I send it to producers and I know, you know, and, and I see like, would you want to work on this? When someone says yes, I've then got the stems ready to go. I send it to them and nine times out of ten, they're going to then finish the track and send it back to it. And, you know, that's your idea it is now done. You've got someone else to do it. Um, so then that kind of like helps me in not feeling like I've wasted time you know like the horrible thing about creative block is like you, you spend all this time making tunes but they're just not being finished they're just going to waste they're just project files that then sit on your hard drive by sending them to other producers and sending them to other people to finish them if you can't finish them you've you've then that's the music that now exists that's music that you can now get signed or like you know do whatever with it's it's another asset to you rather than just being a dead file that's sat on your hard drive. Um, also, sort of under this umbrella, not really, but 
uh, remixing and bootlegging and stuff. Like, if you've got tunes that you love, another thing you could do rather than trying to create an original idea, take someone else's idea and flip it into your own thing. If you can find stems for a track, if you've got friends that produce that could maybe send you stems for their tracks, um, or or bootlegging again, if you're like what I was saying about sampling, you've got to be aware that like you can get fined for it, but nine times out of ten you won't. Just be aware of the risk. But bootlegging which is when you've just got the audio file of a track you like and you're just ripping bits from it and remixing it and reworking it how you want to. Um, that can also be great. I do really like to make bootlegs when I'm having creative block like um, because the idea is already there, isn't it? You've already got a, a, a tune that you like and you could take the melodies from it and things like that and, and create your own style, your own thing around that pre-existing idea and I find that really useful to do also. So that's 10 tips on how to deal with creative block. Uh, if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. That really helps the algorithm so people are seeing the videos. If you've got some extra tips, because like this is like, I'm giving these tips, but I still struggle with this a lot myself. So it's like, if you've got tips that I haven't mentioned here that you feel are good and what have helped you, please leave them in the comments because it does actually like help me too. Like you never stop learning. So like, any advice you guys can give me is wicked the same as the advice I'm giving you. So, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And if you are having creative block, like, ugh, if you are having creative block, then that is really horrible. And I wish you all the best. And I wish that that is over quickly for you. And hopefully these tips can help with that. So, yeah, big up. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.